This is what you might have missed on BCSN's Sports Nightly. A history that has had to withstand some tough times over the last few years. The tour described as a sinking ship back in 2009. That is until a virtually unknown named Michael Wan took over as its commissioner. Now it's thriving once again. We had a chance to speak with the Miami University alum last week at Highland Meadows. First, let's just talk about this tournament. A few years ago, it seemed like it could go away. Now we're celebrating over 30 years, uh, a new extension with Marathon to keep it going for at least three more years. Your thoughts on what this tournament means to the LPGA? Well, this tournament is a, is a hometown event for us. When you get off the plane here, I'm the only guy who gets in a rental car. All the players get in with families and minivans and SUVs, and they go home. And you know, they talk about cookouts and block parties. and it's um, So for us, we spend a lot of time on the road with hotels and shuttles and unzipping your bag and zipping it up. And to see my players staying with families that they've been staying with for 5, 10, or 15 years, it just is, uh, it makes it feel a little bit more like uh, a little bit more like home and a little bit more, less like the road. And that's what makes this event special is the community brings us into their house, not just onto their golf course. In a press conference yesterday, Stacey Lewis was talking about her involvement with Marathon and Marathon's ultimate involvement with this tournament. And how, how did that come about and how important is it for a company in this area, in Northwest Ohio, to be so involved as a, as a title sponsor? Well, you know, you know, what's nice about Marathon is they, uh, they wanted to do this for the community, and they also wanted to bring their customers together. And so I know they had looked at other golf investments way outside of Ohio in different places, but they realized they wanted to do something where their employees could be part of it, and not just the four or five of them that travel to the event. So what's nice is, you know, I've just run into seven or eight employees with families here today. Um, you know, their customers not only come on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but they come in Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. They do a Monday event afterwards too so it's great to see them use the event and incorporate our players I mean, we've had 50 or 60 different players involved in different marathon activities this week and that's what really that's when the LPGA is at its best a corporate sponsor who's, who's interested in both the community and a customer interaction and allows our players to help be part of that I think that's when we're really in a perfect spot the state of women's golf seems strong the top three players in the world are here all from different parts of the world uh, the diversity is there the personalities are there and there's some great golf yeah, it's funny, I did an interview the other day on TV and the guy said, yeah. um, why do you think golf is a good sport for the Olympics? And I said, well, just come out to Toledo, I'll show you the Olympics. 30 different countries, best players in the world from all over the world. And I always say one of the things that makes the Olympics impressive is they put on incredible hometown events, but they let the rest of the world watch. Uh, that's what this is, an incredible hometown event, but 165 countries get to eavesdrop on what's going on this week in Toledo. And I think that's what makes the LPGA great. Young girls from all over the world are striving to get to this tour because they want to play against the best, they want to play for the most amount of money in women's golf and they want the global exposure that this thing can deliver for them and their brand and there's uh, there's no other women's tour like it and you've got two national champions amateurs in this tournament this weekend who are going to be on this tour eventually yeah you know it's uh, it's nice to be able to see future stars be able to play in with the current stars uh, they get to kind of test their game a little bit it's good for them to start making friends out here and uh, so yeah i love it when i get to see young amateurs that are on their way to the tour being able to play with us when we're, when we're out here week and week out Lydia Ko was a sponsor's exemption in this tournament a few years back. She won it last year. She was ranked number one in the world earlier this year. Your thoughts on her rise to superstardom at such a young age? Yeah, she's a, she's a super freak, and I mean that in the most positive sense of the word. What's great about Lydia is, and I say this all the time, is she's 18 going on 19, and she's, the, she's one of the best players in the world. I see a lot of uh, young women in the sport that are 20 going on 40, because the sport can grow you up pretty fast. I mean, we're in 18 different countries, tw you know, 20 different time zones, and, uh, and it's professional. Like, you've you got a lot to do, but Lydia is still funny. She's goofy. She's 18. She's fun. When you're around her, I, you know, it's fun. You know, she keeps everything light, and it's no surprise to me that she can follow up a double bogey with five birdies in a row because she doesn't let uh, she doesn't let life or travel or golf get her down. Um, she doesn't let it define her, and I think that's probably one of the reasons she's so great at her craft. Is uh, it's one shot at a time, and what happened yesterday is yesterday. Be sure to watch Sports Nightly weeknights at 10:30 on BCSN, and follow us on Twitter at sports underscore nightly.